Welcome to our TD interview. Today I'm excited to have first time guest, Mr. Michael Romanik. He is a CEO and president of Silver Dollar Resources. And today he's joining us to share his thoughts on the economy, as well as the metal sector, as well as the mining exploration opportunity down in the Mexico area. So Michael, welcome to our TD interviews. Hey, thanks for having us. Well, I appreciate you taking time to join me. As I mentioned before, looking forward to finding out more as to what's going on down in Mexico with the opportunity you have available. And so I love bringing new opportunities to the viewers here on RTD. And uh, before we dive into that, as always, I'm curious to find out a little bit more about who Michael Romanik is. So if you don't mind, give us a little bit of your background and how you've arrived at this point in your career. No problem. Um, I got 15 years experience in this business, uh, focused on corporate development and finance uh, for Silver Dollar Resources. We incorporated the company back in November of 18. Um, we went public in May of this past year. And that, at that time, silver prices were 14, 15 bucks an ounce. And it was our mandate to go source a quality silver asset to bend in the, in the company. And that's what we did. And timing worked out great with uh, silver up now at what, 24, 25 bucks an ounce. So it, uh, everything kind of worked out well for us. All right, well, I appreciate you for sharing that. So I'm curious to get your thoughts, uh, you know, before we dive into the opportunity that you guys are creating down there in Mexico, I'm curious to get your thoughts on the current environment we're in now. And so the RTD community, they're, they're heavy silver bugs, I must admit, including myself. And so over the last uh, couple of years, of course, last year was a good setup for the hopes of silver uh, being able to, to surpass uh, the $30 mark, I believe, but yet didn't quite get there. But here we are now, as you mentioned, around 24, 25 but yet the environment has changed. And so our government, as well as other governments, have began a little bit of, uh, uh, they've ramped up the, the printing presses to say to us. And so I'm curious to get your thoughts on this current environment and how well, this upcoming year or this current year now could be a year where we probably actually see some nominal uh, improvements upon the last year's uh, increases based upon 1.9 billion, just supposed to be coming here in the U.S. Do you mind sharing your thoughts on that for me? Uh, it's, it's, Wild times. Like uh, I watched just like everybody else, but January 6th, when the, the Capitol building got taken over, it was like watching a movie, surreal. Yet on the, at the end of that day, the Dow closed at an all time high. So in what universe does that make any sense to anybody? It just shows you how deeply divided this, the, the nation is down there. It's actually, con it's very concerning. And then as you stated that Biden's economic relief plan is supposed to be just under $2 trillion, if approved, that's going to put the, your national debt at, what, just under $30 trillion? Um, that's, those are crazy numbers, and they're, they're, you know, they're servicing that debt at record low interest rates. So my thought is, what's going to happen when interest rates start climbing back up? How are they going to service all that debt? I, I don't know the answer to that. And, um, you know, we should be in a perfect environment for precious metals to rise. And as of what, two weeks ago, the U.S. dollar hit a two and a half, right? Everything was looking great. And then all of a sudden, I think today, the U.S. dollar hit a one month high and we're going back up. The dollar index is over 90 and we're, they're going to print another two trillion. So I don't know. <laughs> we, should be, we should be in a good spot here, but I, I don't know the answer. Right. And that's the thing. I don't think there is one single answer we can all point to other than the fact is just that this is all, you know, uh, unprecedented territory. And we're oh. we have a front row seat as to how this all unfolds. But there are, you know, of course, there's always you know, some something to be optimistic about in the fact that holding precious metals in this current environment can be favorable now as well as in the future, because it's just a matter of time, I believe, before the, something breaks and the price is truly reflected in how much uh, an actual ounce of gold and silver is actually worth. And so looking forward ahead, and so if this, if this bill gets passed, I think uh, uh, eventually they're going to roll out some infrastructure slash green new energy type of proposals. Now, that's going to be more trillions on top of the proposed $2, billion, two trillion. And so I'd imagine silver will be definitely be needed <laughs> with all this green energy with solar and stuff like that. You know, share your thoughts on that for me. Well, that's, that's my, my next point there. I think what uh, industrial applications make up half to two thirds of the silver demand out there. And as you just stated, with, with the Senate seats in Georgia going to Democrats, it's more likely now that they'll get the infrastructure bill passed and maybe some of the more creative and aggressive green energy bills passed as well, which should only be bullish for silver with that supply demand fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And the 5G yeah. rollouts. And I've seen on the, on the news here over the weekend that uh, Las Vegas CES show, they had cars now that are in production that have solar built into the roofs and in the side panels, which I thought was a heck of a good idea. 
Um, so then you're seeing all different creative ways and the electric vehicles and solar coming together. So you'd, you'd think that's only going to increase as we move forward world, worldwide. Yeah, I would agree. And that's the thing, like the, the demand for silver in particular will be extremely high. Now, the question will be, what, at what price will those producers, manufacturers, be able to actually source the metals? Because currently right now, $25 or so is very favorable, but yet it, it will not be able to remain at that price and be something that can be used as heavily as it will be. So I assume the supply and demand factor must kick in eventually, because will there be enough uh, supply of silver above ground to meet these demands, you think? I don't know. That's a good question. I guess time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as always, the, the supply might be there, but it'll just be a matter of how much can they acquire it for down the line. Now, amongst all the, the, the information we're sharing, what has been getting a lot of attention is the whole the digital asset space. And so me here, as I mentioned, you know, this channel is primarily focused on precious metals, but yet you can't ignore what else is being positioned in front of us. Do you mind sharing your thoughts on the whole digital asset space? Because those oh. components also utilize silver to mine and things like that as well. Well, the big the Bitcoin you're talking about, I'm assuming here. Yeah. yeah. It's how you, like you said, I, you can't get away from it. it. You see it more and more in mainstream media, which may show that we're close to a top here. But um, I think what a few weeks ago, Elon Musk was made a statement about possibly converting some of the cash reserves on the Tesla balance sheet over to Bitcoin. And I, I know that Square and PayPal are two big companies that are actively purchasing Bitcoin in the market. And I, I don't know how the Bitcoin market works or how, many, how much new supply comes on every year. I think it's 2% annual basis, new, new coins come online. But obviously there, the supply demand, there's more demand than there is supply. So basic economics, Bitcoin goes higher. And I'm not sure how much, how much of uh, the Bitcoin is stealing gold's thunder here. Like how much, how much is in there that should be going to gold in safe haven times? I, I don't know the answer to that. And then on the weekend, Christine Lagarde came out, I see it on Bloomberg, and she called Bitcoin reprehensible, talking about the money laundering, the, the, the typical arguments the government would make. Um, and she called it, it's definitely not a currency, but an asset and a risky one to boot. Yeah. So you're going you're gonna to obviously see government pushback uh, as, they go, as it goes forward. But there's some cr wild swings. Somebody's making money with that Bitcoin. It topped up, what, 41 and change. Now it, it went down to 30,000. Now today, I think it was 35, 36. Yeah. Yeah. So. It, it's very interesting times to say the least. But yet, all the, 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 as you mentioned earlier on today, all the financial markets, uh, the, the, the old, as I like to say, old dying financial markets in particular, because we're being transitioned into a digital world. And so I think, you know, there's no greater time than actually holding something physical in That's your true. possession uh, something, than right something, now. Something tangible. And what we, haven't, what we haven't seen in a while, and I'm waiting for it, and maybe you'll post a clip on Twitter when it comes out, is uh, another big story of a, a Bitcoin hack or some kind of scam or Ponzi scheme, because we're due for like a few hundred million of Bitcoin to vanish yeah. or get lost somewhere or somebody's Bitcoin or Bit wallet be yeah. gone. So just wait. I'm just waiting to see that come across Bloomberg or CNBC's Newswire. Yeah. And also, I think over this past weekend, something came across my radar and it happens to be about the whole stable coin issuance through Tether and how the, the, it's just no longer back and things of that nature. So a lot of information was put out, I'm assuming, to scare people out of that sector. But then I think at this current moment, a lot of people are heavily convinced that this is the wave of the future. So I'm not sure if they'll have the same response of bad news that could probably come up just because people are waiting and anticipating on surpassing, you know, the current all time highs and seeing where this thing can really take off. So I'm not quite sure how to shake people out. Yeah, I don't know either. And I'm not sure who knows how much institutional money is behind that. And again, like I said, you're, you're seeing it more and more in mainstream news. So then you have all those Robin Hood investors, the retail younger generation. Are they going to start piling in? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Right. But then now, let me ask you a question before we dive into silver dollar resources. Um, at this current moment, you have a lot of major players such as Michael Saylor, who's very favorable of this whole Bitcoin adoption as far as moving some of his company's reserves uh, or from Treasury into the space. Now, yeah. with, with people like Michael Saylor, who, who's getting a lot of attention, how much do you think that actually helps the sector when you got people putting hundreds of millions and possibly billions into it? Like that is different. And he's putting, he, he's giving a pretty good case against gold and it, it, to making people think about, uh, should I really do that or not? Well, it's a case against gold, but maybe it's more of a case against getting away from the U S dollar, right? Which is maybe a bigger picture item there 
that they're looking for. Why are they going to Bitcoin? Well, they're, they're going, they're moving away from the U S dollar. Right. Well, like I said, hopefully, well, hope Bitcoin comes crashing down. All that money's got to go back somewhere. And if they're going away from the U S dollar, maybe it comes back into precious metals. You got a tangible asset that's been around for well, thousands of years. It's proven it's, it's a store of value. So you might get a cycle all the way back into gold. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Understandable. And, and so, uh, the whole show is called basically rethinking the dollar. And so I believe uh, years ago began trying to inform people as to events we're currently, you know, witnessing now with the increase in money supply and all the other activity that's happening. Do you mind sharing with me your short term and long term viewpoints on the, the reserve status of the dollar as well as just the use of the word dollar in the days ahead? Well, what's they're printing money like crazy. And I'm not, I'm not, it's obviously not sustainable. Right. And at, at what point do they start, trimming things back. And with COVID, with all this Trump stuff, kind of COVID's kind of been on the back burner, but around the world, we're, they're still in lockdown. So there's no end in sight to that. So governments are still going to be printing money, throwing stimulus at the, at the citizens. So it's, it's, we're still in uncertain times, to say the least. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to get themselves out, especially with that $30 trillion in debt. Um, what, what, what happens there? And I think on your, your Twitter posted, you had something about uh, Russia for the first time ever. Um, their gold reserves mm. were higher than their U.S. dollar uh, reserves. Mm. So you may start seeing that across some of the different countries. So, again, it should be uh, bullish for precious metals. All right. All right, agreed. Now let's get a little bit into uh, silver dollar resources. And so let's talk about, you know, silver, of course, uh, in, the, in the mining exploration space. And so silver dollar resources, give us some insight as to how did you come about with that name in particular? Because it really, it really caught my eye when I saw that. Ah, my partner came up with that. It's a perfect fit. And then with that, I wish I had a better story, but um, we, we, were luck we lucked out on the ticker symbol SLV, which is in the States is obviously the iShares Silver Trust ticker. It just happened to be available. So things just fell into place for us right from the start and they continue to. Um, so silver dollar, uh, we went public back in May of this past year. We're on the CSE stock exchange up in Canada. Ticker is SLV. On the States, it's SLVDF. Uh, 60 million market cap Canadian. Our, our largest shareholder is well-known mining financier, Eric Sprott. He owns about 17%. And First Majestic, a big silver producer, well-known uh, and well-respected, is our second largest shareholder. Between the insider group and those two guys, we own about 40% of the shares outstanding, so it's a tight float. Uh, our primary project is the La Jolla Silver property that we got from First Majestic. And on the technical side, we have a couple of award-winning geologists helping us out, and Perry Durning and Bud Hellmeyer. And between those two guys, they've discovered over 1 billion ounces of silver and over 10 million ounces of gold. Um, so that we're s delighted to have those guys involved with us. And on site down in Mexico, stick handling things for us is Mark Malfair, who was the VP of Chesapeake Gold. And he, he led the team there when they advanced their Matadi's uh, deposit. So he, we have a great team in place and we're looking forward to getting exploration started again on La Jolla. All right, sounds good. Now, if we start off mentioning uh, some, some key players there, Eric Sprout and First Majestic. So how was it, you know, bringing all those, uh, you know, those entities on, to, on board and how much does that kind of build confidence in, in the whole project itself when you're able to get that type of, you know, investment funding from those individuals? Well, it sure makes my life easier when you can throw around names like that, right? It adds instant credibility. Uh, I'm just pleased to have them involved. I think Eric put in about $6 million once we uh, announced the deal for the La Jolla project and First Majestic. We gave them 19.9% of our stock to get that deal done. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I feel it's a win-win situation. We can uh, put all our energy into that asset that for them was just on the back burner. So we can breathe some new life into it and they benefit with our share position and uh, hopefully create some value for all our stakeholders as we move forward. And La Jolla, this project was thrown in when First Majestic bought Silvercrest back in 2015. It was, it's been on the back burner since then. And for us, it, it checks all the boxes. It's a great location in a prolific area around Mexico and the Mexican silver belt in amongst numerous operating mines. You got exploration potential, great infrastructure. And uh, Silvercrest, they spent 20 million bucks 
on it from 2010 to 15 to come up with a historic resource of about 92 million ounces of silver equivalent. So we got a good base historic resource to build off. And the best thing is that the expiration potential. We're going to have news out here in the next several weeks highlighting um, some of the key points that we found from our compilation and set the table for our expiration plans uh, this year, which should be, and we're fully funded. The key thing with silver dollar, mm -hmm. we have $10 million Canadian in cash and no debt. So we are fully funded to undertake our first round of expiration. Interesting. Now, I'll give you, if you don't mind sharing, uh, uh, what other products or opportunities do you guys have available? Anything in, can in the can Canadian region? Because I know you're, yeah. you're from yeah. Canada. When we went public back in May, uh, we threw in some Red Lake gold assets just for simplicity. And it turns out that, that since then, the Red Lake camp has just been on fire. Um, Evolution Mining from Australia came in and took out Newmont. You got Great Bear Resources, a huge success story up in Canada the past couple of years. They have a new big discovery on their hands. And uh, Pure Gold Mining is the latest, highest grade mine to come online in Canada. Um, they started production. They started pouring gold a few weeks ago. So it's a great camp. We have two early stage projects there that we've, we're de-risking. They're fully permitted to drill. And they're in, in amongst a, uh, an area where there's lots of other drilling activity going on. All right. Now share with us, if you don't mind, just because I, I, as I learned about the space myself, I have, you know, a gang of questions, but, you know, share with me a little bit about, uh, you know, your evaluation compared to some of your peers in this whole, in this space as well. Yeah. For, for silver dollar, I think we're for sure on the low end. Um, once we get expiration going on La Jolla, I think we'll get a, a re-rating. And I think what sets us apart is our top tier technical people and our, our shareholder base having such a tight share structure and good support from first majestic and Eric's brought, and again, we're fully funded for expiration. So we're, we're a, a company to keep an eye on, that's for sure. Right, now you, you hinted at uh, before the end of this year, having some things are finally fish, uh, officially rolled out. Can you share with us a little bit of your you know, 12 to 24 month you know, forecast as far as you know, the level of operation you guys hope to be at at that point? Yeah, for well, our next few catalysts here, like I said, we're gonna look to add uh, some experience at the board level. Yeah. We're going to have an update on our compilation to let update our model geological model and our expiration targets and then the granddaddy of all catalysts will be diamond drilling on that project and we're hoping to have, do a very robust drill program as our first pass which we'll look at uh, coming up with a resource at the conclusion of that program interesting interesting well michael i, I appreciate you uh sharing the opportunity uh with silver doctor resources with the rtd interview or rtd audience looking forward to uh continue to find out more as time unfolds later this year i also put information at the bottom of this video here as to how the viewers can find out more at uh, wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash lclv but also are, are you available to connect with any potential investors as well absolutely that's my job uh if anybody has any other questions i would uh suggest you check out the website silverdollarresources.com mm -hmm. on the landing page there's a button down the middle for the presentation give you a good overview of what we're trying to accomplish here at the very last slide it's got a contact slide there my direct lines on there so feel free please give me a shout and i'm happy to answer any questions or concerns anyone might have about silver dollar resources all righty well michael i appreciate you taking time to join us here on rtd as I mentioned, looking forward to following the progress of the, of the project there and definitely have you on back uh, pro hopefully later on this year and find out, get a little bit of an update as to what's going on where you guys are at. So once again, thanks for joining us here on RTD Interviews. Right on, Michael. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.